We're delighted to have Milo Hamilton with us today. He is the top broad, one of the top broadcasters in the country and the top broadcaster for Pittsburgh. A dangerous club. You know, Milo, uh, strangely enough, looking at the standings, I know, because you told me about you fellows having pitching trouble, a lot of the experts picked Pittsburgh to win the division. Well, I think the way we finished last year got a lot of people on our bandwagon, Bob. You know, we started from way back, and I think the last six weeks of last season, we were the best team in the National League. And uh, when you start that far back and only miss by a game or a game and a half, you've really made a run at it. We really got hot. Everything fell into place. We had a lot of speed, and we had a lot of pitching, and we had a lot of power. And we just made a heck of a run at the Phillies, and we lost it on the next to the last day and (laughs) really gave them a chase. And we thought maybe that would really give them the punch to go on and win the National League pennant. But, of course, you know, the Dodgers beat them again. And then over the winter, uh, we felt that our club, uh, with the pitching we were going to take to spring training, and even in spring training we felt that our pitching was going to be the best that it had been in years. And Rooker got hurt. In fact, he's going to pitch for the first time this afternoon. And uh, it's possible that, uh, you know, if we'd have had Rooker, that would have stabilized your starting. But you had to put somebody else in the rotation a couple of times. Uh, Bly Levin, who, who, as you know, you saw him in the American League. What a great pitcher he is. Many think he might have the best curveball in all of baseball. He hasn't won a game yet and has started nine times. If you and I had to bet that on Vegas on opening day, we wouldn't be doing this show today. We'd be on a world tour someplace, all expenses paid, that a guy with that stuff would not have won a game yet. And also, uh, we'd get some good starting pitching and maybe have the score tied or be leading by a run. And then on that particular day, the bullpen wouldn't be able to hold him. And Kent Tocovi, who, you know, last year set records for our club, 31 saves, 91 appearances. And this year, he's had a little trouble getting going. Now, the last three or four times, he looks like the Tocovi of last year. So, as you know, when when you don't get good pitching, then it makes other things magnify. You know, while you're talking about pitching, it's a good time to ask you this question. We both know that the Dodgers draw over 3 million people a year. They lead the majors in attendance. We know that Walter O'Malley has got money buried in under the floor in every room of his 40 room estate now how to be bringing it here how how could Walter O'Malley knowing that pitching is that important give up a pitcher like Tommy John and that I think is going to cost them the pennant well it very well could Bob you make a very good point it's hard to believe not only do they draw three and a half million people which is a world's record but they also own the place. They get all the concessions and all the parking. You know, today, in this age, a lot of clubs don't share in the concessions. They don't get the parking. So they got it coming in under the transom and over the transom out there. And uh, I just kind of feel, and the way they talked, that they just felt, well, maybe Tommy John has had his great years. We can do it without him. I think they, I think they got a little false impression last year when they saw Welch. And he was, boy, he can throw, you Pretty know. Good, yeah. And I think they thought maybe he could step in. Well, he hasn't been able to. At that time also, they had no idea that Terry Forster was going to have to have an elbow operation. And what a job he did for them last year. Well, you know, he hasn't thrown a ball yet. I think if they'd have known those two things, that maybe Welch wasn't quite as good as their first impression was, together with the fact that Forster wasn't going to be able to pitch the first two or three months of the season, they might have opened up that bank book a little bit and kept Tommy John. You know, the deal they made, Roden for Rao, Rao finally won a game for him. He pitched a terrific game the other day. That was Royce with us. Oh, Jerry Royce. Royce. Yeah. Uh, That was a case of two players feeling that they weren't being used correctly. Both made it known they pretty much wanted to be traded. In fact, you know, Royce almost came to the Cubs last year. But with some of these rules, if you've been with a club so long, you can, or if you have it in your contract, you can turn down a trade. He turned down the trade. He didn't want to come here. So, uh, and he had a good spring training for us. But uh, at that time, it looked like our starting rotation was set. He wasn't going to start. He felt that he was still a starting pitcher. So, when it came a chance, and Roden pretty much felt the same way. He'd been a starter with the Dodgers, had been a good one. And all of a sudden, he wasn't pitching. And uh, it was a case of two players still feeling they ought to be starting pitchers that wanted to be traded. So, the two clubs got together on the deal. Royce uh, has gone out there, and he hasn't been starting, but has had a couple of pretty decent relief appearances. But uh, Roden's been hurt. He's pitched one game for us. In fact, he went on the disabled list the day before we came here on this series. 
and we don't know when uh, he's going to be able to pitch. It's something in the back of his shoulder. Uh, he's been examined countless times. They, they can't find any damage there. In other words, uh, it's almost a case uh, after you've been examined so many times and they say we don't find anything, you almost wish they'd find something so they'd know how to treat it. Yeah. But he's never had any problem. He can't ever remember hurting it. Sometimes, you know, when a pitcher's throwing, he'll hear something pop or a tear. Yeah. Well, now the trainer and the doctor and everybody else knows what they're looking for and how they're treating it and how long it's going to take. But he's, it's been the back of his shoulder. He pitched uh, in Atlanta two weeks ago and was pitching very well, had good stuff, and a rain delay. Now here's a guy trying to come back uh, from an injury, had to warm up twice again because of two rain delays, and they think that just set him way back again. So uh, he's on the disabled list, and he's just going to have to build the strength back up in there and hope that it's just a weakness rather than some serious injury. What do you guys in the National League hear about Sparky Anderson? Well, you hear something every day that he's going somewhere. Uh, I guess if you were going to take an outside bet, you'd say maybe he's going to end up as the Yankee manager next year. But uh, you can't. I think he's so happy uh, doing what he's doing. He's kind of doing what we're doing today. He's going around the country doing TV shows for a station in Los Angeles. I know he missed it the first day because it, that was the first day in years that he hadn't been at a ball game on opening day in some capacity with a uniform on, but I think that phase has passed him by now. And uh, I think Sparky uh, will be back because he's a, he's a good manager. He knows how to handle people. He has the respect of his players. And uh, did you ever hear the story of how he got fired? No. Well, you know, Sparky was very adamant on two points. He wanted to trade Geronimo, the center fielder, because he felt that he wasn't giving them what they needed, either with his bat or with his glove anymore. He, in fact, he practically insisted that they, he trade, they trade Geronimo. The other thing, the club wanted to make some changes on the coaching staff, and he felt the loyalty from him and threw them back, the work they had done, he wanted to keep all of his coaches. So Wagner called him on the phone in California one day, and he said, I'm going to fly out. I want to meet you. I want to talk to you. And uh, Sparky had made up his mind, I think, that if these other two things happened, that maybe he was going to quit. Now he says, what if, what if he's coming out here and he's going to offer me a raise? What do I do now? Well, it was none of those, like multiple choice, A, B, C, or D, or none of the above. It was none of the above. He'd flown out there to fire him. <laughs> <laughs> well, he fired one of the best managers in baseball. He really did. And uh, I tell you, you got to give it to Johnny McNamara. Uh, going in on that hot seat that he did because you remember the opening weekend the Giants went in there and obliterated them right in the Cincinnati ballpark the fans there were hostile because Sparky was gone because Pete Rose was gone boy I tell you the first time that Johnny went out to change a pitcher McNamara you'd have thought they were booing everybody that had ever been there over the years and they were playing a record of all of it well that club has turned around he's he they've had some injuries he's moved his people around uh, they're getting better pitching than I think they ever dreamed of, especially with Seaver being hurt, and uh, they're right up on the top of their division. So yeah. you've got to give him some credit. Yes, Bonham won a good game for him the other day. Yes, he did. He's coming back uh, from some problems, and uh, uh, he's not able to go nine, but with Borbone and Bear out in their bullpen, you don't need to go nine anymore.